Hello and welcome to Collect the Creations. In this video we're asking the hot topic question of why the hell have my neighbours been moving the bin for the past 45 minutes? I don't know. It's wonderful while I'm trying to watch a TV show and they're just moving bins. How many bins do they need? Anyway, that's a, that's a question for a different day. But what we're actually talking about is upscaling. In this case, talking about going from a Blu-ray transfer, usually 2K intermediate, which is the highest quality you can get for a Blu-ray, up to a 4K, usually digital intermediate, because when it comes to 2K stuff, it's usually, or at least when it comes to upscaling, it's usually something of the past 15 to 20 years since digital photography has been invented for, like, films, you know? So, like, taking something like Inland Empire or Michael Mann's Collateral and being like, hey, these were shot in 1080p or 720p. Let, let's let's upscale this baby to 4K. That's that's a smart approach. Um, now there is some comparisons. Obviously, those ones are some interesting comparisons. Something like the latest Crimson Peak 4K from um, Arrow Video. I actually compared recently to the original Blu-ray that I had, and in the original Blu-ray, it already looked pretty good. But then. You contrast it to the 4K, which is still also director approved and stuff, and has the added notion of HDR grading and Dolby Vision, and just looks a lot richer, a lot nicer. Like all the colors, all the textures, everything about it looks perkier. Everything about it looks more flavorful. But then you want to get that. That that's a very. I feel like that's a very obvious comparison because that's a film that really emphasizes visual texture like colors and set design and digital like the actual color palettes and stuff as well as the costuming. It's you know a period piece and whatever but it's also a gothic romance so it emphasizes its production design and I really appreciate that about it. If anything for the 4K it's basically that. I'm not looking for it to get spookier scarier scenes and whatever even though the blacks do look quite nice and crisp. But that's still an upscale that was originally shot at a 2K intermediate and then upscaled to a 4K digital intermediate with a <laughs> an extra layer in of HDR and Dolby Vision grading. So, boy, that's a lot of words, isn't it? From like layman terms, this is a bit uh, <laughs> a bit tricky. Now, I'm not as well taught in terms of every single technical aspect of what changes between a 2K scan to a 4K scan. I'm mostly referencing this in terms of films made on with digital cameras and whatever. But at the same time, I, I also feel like if I talk about something like uh, Shaun of the Dead or Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which were two films shot on film, at least I'm pretty sure Scott Pilgrim was. I know it was 2010, but I'm pretty sure it was still shot on film. At least Shaun of the Dead, I'm pretty sure, still was, because by that stage they hadn't really, digital wasn't too big. And those were upscaled for their 4K releases. And that's one of those comparisons where I'm like, that feels like a lazier attempt. The only benefit of those 4Ks, at least in my mind, is slightly better picture with the HDR grading, but mostly it's the audio upgrade, which is the complete opposite to Crimson Peak. Crimson Peak already had the same DTSX track. They didn't have to modify it at all. It already sounded great. 7.1 compatible, easy peasy. But you look at, you know, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, you look at Shaun of the Dead, they were upgraded in their audio to either Dolby Atmos or DTSX. And that was, for me, notable because I had been watching their Blu-rays for years and it actually sounded like it had a bit more of an uptick to it because of this new, you know, this new release. But the picture quality and stuff didn't seem to really scream home, oh my god, this is like the best upscale I've ever seen. But I'm also like, why were they upscaled? You know, why couldn't you do a proper 4K restoration? Something like Lord of the Rings, I can understand, because that, despite being shot on film, all the digital effects were done at a 2K in the intermediate, like at the, at the maximum level of when they made it back in the early 2000s. Like, they can't, can't do 4K back then, it wasn't a thing. So it's like that, I can understand that even though they still upgraded it to 4K and people still complain that some of the digital effects are a bit iffy, I know it's what it is. I still watch the money on 4K and I think it still works. Sure, the digital effects are iffy, but they were always iffy. It doesn't matter. Maybe it just highlights it a bit more when it gets to a 4K, especially for something like Lord of the Rings, where the effects can be a bit more minuscule when you, you know, put it on a DVD or if you put it onto a Blu-ray. You know, you, you heighten the image too much and it becomes very noticeable for certain things. 
I think even Mad Max Fury Road had the same kind of element, but that was more of a color grading thing where the flames on the 4K are a bit too cartoonishly bright in contrast to the standard Blu-ray, but then everything else looks fucking divine. So I don't complain. I kind of hate that I read that in the review once, so now every time I watch it, I just think of that. Uh, it doesn't really bother me that much, realistically, but still. But of course, then you get something like, again, uh, Collateral and Inland Empire, two films filmed on digital camcorders at the time, and they have distinctly different looks, where Collateral benefits from the 4K UHD because, as it is, Michael Mann uses it, he filmed it in a particular way where the night photography looks specific and nicely detailed, like you compare it to his next film, which was, um, was it his previous film at the time? I think it was his next one with uh, uh, Miami Vice. Both shot digitally, but shot in two different styles with two different types of digital cameras. And if you up, you know, put Miami Vice onto a 4K, it would look really weird. On a Blu-ray, it already looks weird enough, but it looks good, like stylized. On a 4K, I feel like it would look a bit too off. But Miami Vice, it's all shot at night. It's all over one night. It kind of works with the extra addition of it being a higher quality format, as well as, you know, the HDR grading. I would say that the HDR grading is the one thing that you want to argue is the main change of, oh, well, with Crimson Peak, if the HDR grading that changes, it's like, no, comparing it with the, with the Blu-ray, you notice more of the textures, you notice more of the look of the actual, you know, construction of the buildings and everything. Like, the, the, the on-set stuff looks more detailed, more refined, because of the, uh, the enhanced picture quality. You know, the, the HDR grading benefits it, sure, it amplifies and upticks some of the colours, but the film was already vastly colourful. It's like saying that, you know, uh, you grab... Um, Hunger Games, and you put the first half where it's all de, you know, decolored and desaturated, and you're like, I'm gonna change my color settings. I did that once by accident. Change the color settings. It became really vivid. I'm like, wow, this looks fantastic. And then they go to the capital, and suddenly it looked really bad because I had changed the settings and made the bad part of the film look good when it's meant to look bad. You know, uh, kind of artistic choice in the color grading. You learn things by mistake sometimes. It's a wonderful habit. So something like, again, uh, Inland Empire, I feel like is the hardest stretch to go for because that I don't think is actually a 4K UHD, if I'm not mistaken, but it is upscaled to 4K from what is basically something filmed for a DVD. And that's a, a call of its own. There was a guy who did a video on that a couple months ago, and it's a very interesting process, but the picture definitely loses itself because of that. Uh, it, it shouldn't have been upscaled. <laughs> it's like being rendered and re-rendered too many times that it blacks out and blows out certain elements. It's weird. Is, is it the question of, is this a necessity? Should this happen? Because the amount of times I will question if I should buy a 4K UHD in particular because it's been upscaled. Uh, it's never like a 4K transfer on a disc, because if it's a 4K transfer on a Blu-ray disc, you know that's being remastered to 4K, it's not an upscale. It's only ever an upscale if it's put onto a UHD disc. Or at least, that's what I've noticed. I could be wrong in saying that, but I'm pretty goddamn sure. But that's the parts where you notice it, you know, because it's on a different format, it's a higher quality format. And the question is, is it really worth it if it's just a, you know, 2K digital intermediate that's been upscaled? And I'm up and down on it as a collector, as, as someone who loves watching films in the preferred style that a director, you know, or cinematographer wants it to look, again, go with the controversial take with something like The Matrix or something, you know, it's like, if that's how they want it to look, I will accept it, you know? There are some times where I might be a bit iffy about it, but like, you know, I don't know if Edgar Wright or Bill Pope looked at Scott Pilgrim and that was upscaled to a 4K and were like, that looks good. We'll, we'll just keep it like, we won't change it. That's good enough, you know. Like, I don't know if they, did they do anything on it? Like, I know that they had enhanced it for like Dolby Atmos or whatever, or at least they'd done something with the audio so they could put it into a Dolby Cinema for its 10th anniversary. But uh, Pandemic kind of screwed that, so then they kind of like delayed it a year, but either way. But I don't think that got onto the physical release, I'm pretty sure. I don't recall. Uh, it might have, but it wasn't that enhanced in my mind. I, I remember being so excited to watch it and I put it on and I'm like, this just feels like the exact same experience. Like, I don't think it's changed anything. I still watch the 4K disc over the Blu-ray now, but 
Of course I will. I spent a lot of money on it. I will look into details if I'm buying a film to see if it's if it's a 4K, if it's a true native 4K, or if it's a 2K upscale. And usually I just kind of want to see some kind of perspective on is it actually worth it getting for the uptick in details? You know, it's always the thing of the... the, the I feel like it's a cliche, at least by the time, for me reading it so often, saying how, like, oh, clothing details and textures are more nuanced, you can see it better. All, all these little things, like, you can see, like, stubble on the person's face or the beads of sweat. Like, all these minute details that you wouldn't really look for as a standard viewer. Like, if you're just watching a flick, just any goddamn movie, you won't give a shit if you can see that suddenly they're a bit sweatier than they were previously. No, not a lot of people care. Especially when it comes to 4K as a format. It's not a really big deal. Obviously, I'm talking to the people who really give a shit about these nitty-gritty details. Is it worth getting a 2K upscale to 4K? And I think the answer is still yes anyway. Um, because most of the time, they when they do do a upscale, they don't really go back to the film. Unless they fuck it up really badly. And people are just immediately like, no, we're not buying that. Actually, you know what? They've never fixed it. I don't think I've ever seen a 4K UHD come out, everyone universally hated, and then the studio, the company, whomever edited it, go back and fix it. I know that there's The Dish, which is an Australian film, only had a Blu-ray release, but when they put it onto a Blu-ray, the first release apparently looked awful, so they recalled it and did it again and remastered and apparently it looks fucking fantastic in comparison. I've only ever had that new remastered disc and the original DVD, and it does look goddamn good. But they've never re they've never fixed Terminator 2. They're not going to do that. Uh, they should do that. They're not going to do that, though. You know, say, like, with Aliens and with uh, any goddamn James Cameron film of the past couple years that's gotten a 4K UHD outside of, like, Avatar, you know, and... Uh, Titanic has its issues, but for the most part, I think it looks fine. But, like, all those Disney releases, that's, that's like, they're not going to go back and fix it. That's a creative choice. That's a deliberate choice. It's, it can't be helped, you know? At, you know, even Inland Empire is still a deliberate choice from David Lynch. I only bought it because I wanted the special features. If the image looks like shit, I put on the old Blu-ray. It's not hard, you know? I have the uh, benefit of actually having multi multiple versions of the format. Um, multiple versions of the film on multiple formats. Same with, like, Lord of the Rings. I have the 4K set, which has the theatrical and extended cuts. I've watched them. I like the looks of them. I didn't even... I grew up with the DVDs. I never watched them on Blu-ray until I'm pr maybe a year or two before the 4Ks came out. I'd gotten all the films, the theatrical cuts, on Blu-ray. They're, like, ten bucks each. So I watched them all. Had never seen the theatrical cuts before because I grew up on the extended cuts. I thought it looked great. Then we get the, you know, the 4K UHDs. I watched all of those. I'm pretty sure Dad and I did the extended cuts for all three. Um, I liked them. I thought they looked good. It's kind of, it's apparently a controversial thing. Some people don't like the color grading. Some people don't like this and that. It's a thing. It doesn't matter. I don't give a shit. <laughs> if you have several versions of the film, I don't th see there's any reason to complain realistically. Just choose the version you like the most and go with that. The argument's been made for The Matrix about that for years. Do you want the non-green version or the green version? Pick your fancy. Maybe the in-between. I'm pretty sure the 4K is actually an in-between. I have a way. I like the 4K of that film. God, the amount of dislikes I'm going to get just for saying that. I like the film. All right. I grew up with it on DVD. I never watched it in the cinema. I was born in 98. It doesn't matter to me. You know, if, if the director's... And or the cinematographer like the look of it, and they're that they're like this is our stamp of approval. I'm happy with it. You know, if I don't like the look of it, I just don't watch it. I just watch a different version. Yeah, obviously, it, it's very much a thing for directors to do that to go over their films and to change color gradings and stuff, and it is still upsetting. Obviously, I'm not going to be like I'm on the high horse saying it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't realistically, because you have the choice of buying the physical format. If you don't like it, don't buy it. That'll fucking tell the companies that they that you don't want it. <laughs> Email them. Harass the fuck out of them. Maybe not actually, because I feel like that'll just go to an intern and they'll just drink themselves to death. I don't know what they do in America. Do they do that? I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. Man, this kind of went on a tangent, didn't it? Uh, what was I saying? 2K upscales? Um... Yeah, I mostly like it if it actually enhances the 
appeal of the picture quality, you know, because that's what it is. It's not really about the audio in this case, it's about the picture. If the picture looks better than the previous Blu-ray, then I think it's worth getting. Crimson Peak I was up in the air about, but the packaging actually sold me before the actual, you know, 4K remaster did it. And then watching the 4K, I'm like, this looks fucking amazing. And I compare it to the Blu-ray, I'm like, it still looks good, but oh my god, the 4K looks so much better. Like, you can tell, and most of the time... It can be tricky to tell. It's probably the HDR grading, let's be honest. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's so many upticks and details that I actually did notice. I'm like, man, that's so nice. I can actually look at it and notice it. But uh, I, I think it is bothersome if they get, like, a, a film that was filmed on actual film, celluloid, and they remaster it for a Blu-ray. Like, just put on a Blu-ray disc, whatever, but then the 4K is just an upscale, say... Man, I feel like Sam Raimi's Spider-Man films were all upscaled to 4K, so they weren't actually remastered properly. Um, yeah, I think that might be one of them, but something like that. Maybe, I'm trying to think of anything prior to goddamn the 2000s. <laughs> something that doesn't have, like, heavy CGI or whatever. But, like, that kind of thing of something that was put on all 4K onto a Blu-ray disc looks great. And then they've just upscaled it rather than actually going through the process of remastering it all, even if the digital effects look wonky. They will look wonky anyway. That's how they are. You know, again, look at the Mummy films. They're like almost the perfect example of it has just the right level of campy because that's just how the effects were. It's the best that they could do at the time. And honestly, I think they still work because for me, at least, they're consistent. They're shitty throughout even though I like them, not the second film, but the first film, you know, that they're, they're consistent throughout the whole film. It's not like some parts look fantastic and other parts look like shit. Like you've had a bunch of people work on this thing, but it's just one guy work on the rest of it, you know? That's kind of a different avenue. <laughs> I don't know, let me know your thoughts down below and if my tangent about how we shouldn't care, but also you should at the same time. Tell me if that pissed you off. Um, I think it's just a lot of high horse stuff, but at the same time, I think that if a film can't actually process itself to being native 4K, and we can only get a 2K upscale, then make sure the 2K upscale looks real fucking nice. Again, Crimson Peak is a great example of a 2K upscale that looks great on 4K. Do you need it on 4K? Not necessarily. Does it look great on 4K? It looks amazing on 4K. Even Collateral looks good on 4K. It's kind of crazy. Like, I only ever had that on DVD, and then I've gone straight to a 4K because there was no... There was a Blu-ray release, but, like, there's no combo pack in Australia. It's not a 4K Blu-ray. It's just a 4K. And I think it looks great, but that's also because it's, a lot of it is nighttime cinematography. So, yeah, I don't know, it, it, it's, a, it's a strange one, especially with the early to mid-2000s stuff that's been upscaled, you know, stuff that was probably automatically, like, filmed at the highest capacity of 2K, and then, you know, put on all 4K, so, because there are a lot of films that are put onto 4K discs that are from 2K intermediates that don't need a 4K UHD, think about, it, like, a generic rom-com, or most Scarlett Johansson films of the past 20 years. Like, a lot of them were, like, just 2K films, and for some reason they've been upscaled to 4K. You want Rough Night on 4K? There you go. It's an upscale. You get some extra, a couple extra colours. Look, you can see more textures in their dresses or something. I don't want to criticise costume design, realistically. But at the same time, if it's a generic-looking film that doesn't really, like, if it looks normal, you know, like our everyday lives, what's the fucking point of upscaling it? Who cares? The amount of rough night 4Ks I've seen out there is kind of crazy. Um, anyway, uh, let me know your thoughts. And, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I definitely think it's a weaker option if it's a film that's actually being put, that's filmed on film, put on a Blu-ray disc at a 1080p standard, and then just upscaled with an added HDR, just slapped on, just to sell discs instead of actually putting in the time and the effort of remastering the original negative. There's a reason why it's so great to see it remastered from the original camera negative or like intermediate or just some actual effort has been put into making sure that this looks the best it possibly can. So, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. See you next time. Adios.